like Christmas Day here and off the ball because the Hurland Show is back. I'm Shane Stilton, delighted to be here again with me. I was supposed to have a Biffo double team, but Will O'Callaghan has pulled out, so we've only got Burr man Michael Verney here today. How are you doing, Michael? Good, Shane. One is enough now, to be fair. I'd just like to put it on the record as well that your kind of credibility as a hurling man has been called into question given the fact that you're now involved in a rival football show so you're going to, you really have to prove yourself all over again uh, I'm trying to be a dual presenter here is there any problem with, uh, the day of the dual player the day of the dual presenter is gone I'm trying to prove that a dual player can still survive no I don't think they can but you're not having it you're not having it um, I was just thinking before we came on air there like funny stories of when you grow up playing hurling is there anything that, that kind of comes to mind for you of a game you might have played in as a young lad um, I suppose it's probably more the the mad kind of notions you'd have as a young fella. I, I don't know, probably only country people would be aware of it, but I don't know if you ever had in your house growing up, you know the way the flies would be going rampant during the summer? Like yeah. We used to always have, and we actually had it this summer as well, which is, I'm ashamed to say, This like it's like a yellow kind of thing that hangs off the, the fly ceiling. tape? Yeah, oh, it's the most horrible looking, and you'd be, like people would come into the house and they'd be like nearly avoiding <laughs> it, but there'd be about 40 flies on it, so it served its purpose. But when I was about 11, I thought it would be a great idea, like, like why? Like why? What's the story here? Why are the flies dying? Like they're obviously getting stuck to us. So I was like, maybe if I like put a bit of this on my hurl and I went for a solar run, like they wouldn't be able to get the ball <laughs> off my hurl. But uh, I tried. I tried it one day. But like you literally, you literally placed it onto the hurl. And I did go. I did go for a while. But like the problem is. What happens when you want to actually take the ball off the hurl to strike it? But I remember doing that when I was as eleven or twelve. It was just one of those stupid things that you do as a kid. Like, did you do it in a match or just? Pop yeah, it was a practice. I think it was a, no, it was an under twelve championship match. I think um, I didn't need to say I didn't do it again. Like, but uh, yeah, I w- and definitely now, like as a cornerback, it's definitely going so on solo runs is the last thing you'd be doing. Yeah, so you'd, you'd just be thinking about like you'd that. You'd be hand passing it, get rid of it. Exactly. Away. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. What struck, uh, what struck me earlier as well, I, I did a piece about this a few years ago, but I was a young lad and I remember we were playing in the North Tip Championship, I think it was under, four, under 16 I'd say, and um, I was marking this guy for about 40 minutes or so and then he was taken off. I was going back, and then uh, I, I, stop now. Are you sure he was? In, he was obviously taken off injured. He wasn't getting a scutcheon or anything anyway. But go on, sorry. Look, he hadn't felt the weight of the ball, <laughs> right? And then a girl came on in his place. Lovely. And I thought, sure, look, things are going to get even better here as well, because you know I'm some stallion or whatever. That's. Uh, but anyway, the game finished and all this kind of crack. They got a goal at one point, and I, I wasn't sure what happened. But um, I was working then on a building site a few months later, and my and my uncle was taking me to was bringing me. It was on his site. And he goes to me one day in front of everyone at break time, and I'm 14 or 15, and you can imagine how young and meek you would be at that stage. And he goes, lads, did I ever tell you about the time that a girl scored a diving header against Shane from the 21? <laughs> and I was like, what is he even talking about? So it turned out that uh, one of their players was sold on through, I think it was Balna or Newport or something like that, to, and took a shot from about 25 or 30 yards out. I went out to kind of half block him, and I looked behind me then, I thought that was a meek, you know, tame enough shot, and it was in the back of the net. And I was like, what happened? Turned out it had clipped her one's helmet and deceived the goalkeeper beautiful, on the way in. Beautiful. So she'd scored an absolute cracker diving header from the 21. My only regret is that you didn't bring this up sooner. Why? Because it'd just be, it'd be absolutely going to town in you. Saying that we played, there's a Carlo Mali Cup, a soccer cup. The Carlo Mali was a journalist that died a couple of years ago and they play a soccer tournament in his uh, memory every year, five aside. And I got the worst nutmeg of all time <laughs> from it. She was, she was obviously a good soccer player, but like the abuse I got over it was, was fair enough. But I'll, I'll not definitely bring that up again, no doubt. Yeah, and, and that reminds me of one other story. I was playing pool in, in Bursley one time. We had played a soccer match and it was winner stays on. And and I, I had happened to win a game and I was staying on and a girl came on and uh, I started to panic because the whole pub was just cheering her on and every shot I was, I started to panic. She had a shot for the black to win, somehow missed it and left it over the pocket and I somehow scraped through. But there you go, it's an equal world. You're probably lucky it was over the pocket. It's amazing, uh, yeah, when the pressure kind of ramps up there, anything can happen and you're just missing shots that you shouldn't miss. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, it's been a good couple of opening weeks in the National Hurling League. The story has to be Carlo, drawn with Galway. It was incredible. Story. Unbelievable, in fairness. And they've kind of um, they've gotten closer to, we'll say, eight and nine, and probably gotten a bit ahead of Leash and Offaly, I'd say. But like, if you look at it, since Colin Bonner came in, obviously the first year they won the Christy Ring and won it fairly convincingly. Last year they won 2A, beat Westmead. They won the Joe McDonough, beat Westmead. Um, and I don't think they're going to be the soft touch maybe that people taught in the Leinster Championship like there's, there's some serious hurlers and even I was chatting to chatting to the, the man at the moment Marty Kavanagh on Monday and it's just like 
yeah, it was it was great, but not that much of a surprise, like because they mm. they know what they've been doing over the last couple of years. Well, it's not Galway at full tilt. Like, no, that's know, fair enough. Yeah, that. but at the same time, it's not uh, Carlo at full tilt either, because Chris Nolan only came on because uh, he's playing a lot of Fitzgibbon. Kevin McDonald's out for another week because it would have burst the appendix. Then you have Dermot Byrne missing, uh, Paul Cody. Dennis Murphy, who's a great free taker from, from Manchester, Manchester yeah, yeah. to come back. So they have plenty more in reserve as well. Um, so the last few moments, and I think that last three that Marty Kavanagh hit, were captured by KCLR. We'll have a little listen. 20 points to 19, Galway Lee. John Michael Nolan has pulled it from the clouds. They're going looking for the equaliser. The big man from Weishel. Ball's knocked off his stick. In goes Marty Kavanagh. Free in, free in for Carlo. This could be the most important point in Carlo hurling history. Because status in the Division 1B... Two points won't keep you there. Three could get you to a quarter final. And if anything, I think no one in Galway would be Grudge Carlo a point here today. They've given it everything. Marty Cavanaugh with the free sends it across the face of the goal. We're level in the yes. Cullen Park. That should be it. That should be it. 20 points apiece in the watch Cullen Park. Carl McAllister blows the full time whistle. And I hear some of you say it's only Division 1B, it's only a hurling team. These lads love their hurling. This is Galway. They won their All-Ireland final two years ago. They've come here today with lots of players. There's hundreds and hundreds of kids gone onto the field. The last time they played, Carla won 5-7-4-9 to four, nine here in Netwatch Cullen Park in 1960. Well, it's finished 20 points apiece here today in a cracking, cracking display by a Carlo team that never gave up from start to finish. Brennan and Hennessy would make you want to go out and hurl straight away, wouldn't he? With that he sort would, of and that's, like, that's the third or fourth time in the last couple of years that he's had that occasion. It was the same with the football last year when the beat killed there as well, yeah. It was great, like Marty was saying as well, there was about 2,500 there, he'd never experienced anything like it, and when they were going toe for toe, point for point in the last couple of minutes, he just said he'd never experienced a, a din, a noise kind of like that. And it's amazing, that'll have a little, that'll have a little spin-off effect as well, just... Maybe not, maybe not in the next couple of years, but in 10 years when those kids kind of grow up as well because they've seen something pretty special. As Brendan said, God, we're all Ireland champions like 18 months ago, you know. We're going to talk a bit more about Offaly uh, a little later on, but geez, Carlo look like they're pushing away from Offaly. As I said, we'll come back to that. We just want to start off with Cork because there's been a lot of talk there recently about Cork having confidence on the right side of arrogance, but haven't seen them in the first couple of days. Like They're competing, but it's on the wrong side of winning. What have you made of them? Yeah, I suppose the one thing I would say about Cork, and it's something Brendan Cummins always says, like if Hurling was a game played below the shoulder, Cork would be in the All-Ireland every year. Um, they just don't seem to be they just don't seem to be built for, we'd say, the hardship of a, of a league campaign. And there is a lot of hardship involved. It's not free, it's not free flowing Hurling, definitely when you're playing in Parky Cueva anyway, at the Against moment. Against Kilkenny, right? After yeah. half time, Kilkenny were, I think, a point up, and then they went five points up um, after getting a goal. And it was as if they just downed tools and they didn't have the dog in them. And I'm just wondering that... Now, I thought they were a bit unfortunate against Limerick in the All-Ireland semi-final last year. But when the going got tough, did they have enough there? And, that, and that's what I wonder about them. Do they have enough dog in them when it really, really matters? We know Kilkenny will. We know Limerick look like they will as well. Aidan Walsh is one of a number of players who's been brought back this year. Aidan Walsh, Cormac Murphy's back in midfield. He scored four points at Nolan Park. He looks like he has the dog in him and, and a bit of quality as well. Stephen MacDonald, former captain, he's back as well. I thought it was interesting the way they set up against, um, against Kilkenny. So you would have had the inside line that day. There was Jamie Coughlin, uh, Patrick Horgan and Aidan Walsh. Now Aidan Walsh was generally one of the inside two. Coughlin was Roman and Horgan was inside with him. And early on in the game, before Kilkenny really got to grips with them and started to put the pressure outfield, which therefore means you can't play in as high quality course, a ball yeah. as you want. And within that, the Cork half forward line were dropping out the field. So it left a lot of space on the inside for these Cork forwards who were interchanging at times as well. And Kilkenny... They had um, Paul Murphy on Horgan pretty quickly because he was doing a bit of damage, but they also wanted him closer to goals rather than Hugh Lawler and Tommy Walsh, who were younger players. So it caused a conundrum for Kilkenny. But in the first half, they actually played lovely ball inside and out wide for, for Aidan Walsh. He got on it a couple of times. Really nice touch, actually. Same against Wexford the other day as well, yeah. And people yeah. would say that, oh, he's flip-flopping between uh, football for the last number of years. Where is his touch uh, going to be? But it was actually really nice. And as, as well against um, Wexford, the balls that they were playing in, I'm just going to use a marker here to show the sort of ball. And this is fairly typical of Cork, anyway. Down into the wing, he would come out, collect it, 
wind around and I don't think a player is going to commit on him because they know with the athleticism he has if he drops the shoulder you're in trouble and he was just allowed to just pop it over from there and the same in the other corner as well so we know that they've got great, really really good forwards we know that they've got Harnady to come back Lahan is capable of anything Patrick Horgan unbelievable wrist, wrists as well do you see him as being a player who can take them on to the next level? Uh, well, looking at the Wexford game the other day, I just thought it was very relaxed. They pointed, Wexford tried to put like for like in on him, so they put Matt O'Hanlon in on him. But he gave him a yard and he was kind of nearly strolling out. O'Hanlon put, did go out the field then. Yeah, he did go after, yeah. But like, there, were, there were simple enough scores, I didn't think there was much pressure on. I would question, and I know John Myler has an awful lot of time for him because he, he said it in interviews, Oh, your touch has to be lightning in, full, in the full forward line because they're not going to get they're not going to play high ball. I would imagine they're not going to play too much high ball in because it doesn't suit the other two lads in there. I just don't know if when the ball comes around his feet if he's quick enough. I've seen him. I've seen him a couple times. I've seen him at wing back. I've seen him at midfield. I've seen him at wing forward. Like in around the full forward line is like you get three or four balls. They don't go into your hand. You don't get score. You're in trouble after 20 minutes. Mm. I, I just don't know, is he knacky and is he knacky enough inside, especially when the ball comes down around his feet? I would have serious question marks. The, the there. way Cork flopped in that second half against Kilkenny, so they left Walsh in for a good while and then eventually they swapped him with Dalton because they just started hitting 50 50 ball up the field, taking pot shots from distance, the team that was kind of panicked. But um, they moved him out to centre forward then and he got no change there either, just like Declan Dalton, because they weren't actually working the ball up the field and they panicked. So what I'm interested to see is as the year goes on that they develop. Their style, their style is similar to the tip style in a way. When they're playing when they're playing how they want to play, it's relatively snappy, 20, 30 yard pass until you get around here. It's a lovely diagonal ball inside to favour the lads they have inside. It's not striking from here to here. That that just won't work. Yeah, but they are hitting corners and hitting space. Oh, they the do. Ball, they so hit space lovely here from, we we'll say, the 65 up or that here, yeah. They're, but, they're missing players at the moment, but I, I wonder, is Tim O'Mahony the man for a centre-back? We know he's a huge man, must be six foot f uh, five, give or take. Not really fully sure. I, I know. I think he might have been in the... M been mentioned for a man in a match the other day on TG Carr. Not fully sure about him. Um, there, I think he's a very good player, but I'm not 100% sure. It's a big position, you know the yourself. And they're big missing yeah, guys. So. It's a big position to put somebody in at that age. Usually, that age, there's yeah. not too many. Like I know Ronan Matter was about 20, I'd say, when he went in for tip, but it's kind of it's flip flop maybe a bit since then. It is a big, it's a big commitment to put a, to put a young guy in there and try and build around him. Did you see what Davy Fitz did the other day when uh, so Wexford obviously won in Cork? But he brought on Lee Chin in the second half and he put Lee Chin straight over on Mark Coleman. First puck out straight away on top of Mark Coleman, Lee Chin snapped it over him. And I just thought straight away of Brick Walsh, Walsh yeah, in the 2017 yeah. semi final. Our team's going to, Mark Coleman is a beautiful hurler, he's got great pace. Our team's going to go after him in a different way. So again, I think John Myler has a lot to weigh up and, you know, again, has he got. Is he finding enough to take them from All Ireland semi finalists, monster champions, to All Ireland title winners? It's gassed all. Like I don't know what we talk about it now. We say maybe their panelists and is strong. They were in an All Ireland final. They were. They were. In, they should have been yeah. in an All Ireland but final. But would they have had the metal for Galway? Because Limerick, we know, are made of steel. Would Cork have had the metal? Yeah, I, I would have questioned that at different stages last year as well. But they play. They play a different way. They try and play. We'd say around the metal, shall we say. They try and play smartly and avoid, we'd say, those big physical confrontations. And they do it very, very effectively. So if that sort of style doesn't suit them, this kind of man-on-man, -man, they try to avoid it. And in a way, without being smart, and as a, thinking as from a coach and a manager point of view, you have to admire that as well. They're playing to their strengths, not another team's strengths. Mm. Kilkenny, are they contenders once again? I, th I think they are. I think it's funny how it's worked out. Missing the Ballyhale lads and how many bodies they were down for the league last year. So many lads got exposure and he learned He learned an awful lot about different lads. Richie Latty, John Donnelly, uh, James Matter, all these guys. And as a result, he's developed a strong, strong panel, which means that they can nearly beat Clare and, and beat Cork, despite... I looked at the forward line, I looked at the six forwards when I was doing team news the Friday night before the first league game, I was like, where are their scores going to come from? Yeah. Genuinely, it was like, I was like, 114, 115. I was like, if they get to that, and I don't think they'll win a the game with that, and they got, they well exceeded that. Like, oh, they, like they beat Cork hands down for yeah. the finish. And the guy who really stood out for me that day was Billy Ryan. He, so he's obviously been sharp from hurling all through the winter with uh, Greg Valley Callan yeah. as well. They lost their All-Ireland semi-final as well. But the sort of ball that went into them, so I'm actually just going to have uh, Kilkenny as red here for a second but 
Conor O'Sullivan, who would be about five foot seven, maybe five yeah, foot yeah. eight, the Cork corner back. He usually played sweeper. He played sweeper a lot, didn't he? He did back ago, in yeah. twenty thirteen, especially. But Billy Ryan is must be six foot anyway, and there was a lot of lovely cross field high hanging ball whereby Billy Ryan would have been, Conor O'Sullivan would have been goal side of Billy Ryan. So Billy Ryan's able to stand behind him and the ball has been lofted in and he's able to catch it over him and he's the sort of player who's going to take the ball and go at you straight away. He's with lightning, it. isn't he? And he's lightning. I didn't realise he was as quick. Yeah, it's he's a very Kilkenny-esque way for a forward to be turn, go at you, look for the soft shoulder yeah, yeah. and try and burst through so he could be the next guy and when you consider like they were competitive against Clare. Now, and all, te- all players are down, or all teams are down players at the moment. They beat Corkwell. They were very competitive against Clare. They've got TJ Reid, Richie Hogan, Wally Walsh, Colin Fenley, Killian Buckley, Porrick Walsh, Joey Holden, mm-hmm. all to return by the end of the league. The thing with the younger fellas is, the, is putting games back to back. Like Billy Ryan was brilliant the first day, maybe quietish the second day. Yeah. Um, Richie Latty came on and scored. I'm not too sure why he scored against Cork. He started next day and he was taken off. And that's been a kind of that's been a trend probably yeah. with him. And even with John Donnelly, when John Donnelly starts, he doesn't tend to finish or he tends to be gone with a 50 minute. But it's gra- it's gas how it's after working out for Cody. That's something that he's going. That's something that he can work on and have worked on all through last year's league and championship and all through this year's. And they've been forced to develop it, but. I think in the long term and over the next couple of years they'll reap the, the reap the fruits of that. I think they're an absolute All Ireland contender this year. Yeah, my only concern will be, and I know it's going fine so far. Is we talked about Tim O'Matney would say at centre back, the full back position now in Hurling is massively important. I think you have to be able to do everything as a full back. I think you have to be able to do everything, and they've put Hugh Lawler in there with the view to release some Parik Walsh, and if it works. If it works, it's huge, because their half-back line is, will be really hard to break down. If it doesn't work, Park Walsh is moving back and maybe hasn't played there in a couple of games and you're shuffling and moving and changing. But it'll be interesting to see. He's obviously seen, uh, he's obviously seen a good bit with him in club action with all Auckland and likes the look of him. So it'd be interesting to see how that goes. That would be my... That would be my Main concern. Mm. It's a, it, like I'm just trying to think of Kilkenny down uh, down the line further on the season when they played the likes of Clare and Limerick in the championship, and we and Kilkenny, uh, Galway as well. Mm. All these teams now are dragging their half forward line the whole way out the field, and we've got a couple of images from the Tip and um, Limerick game last weekend, where you can see you can see on the screen there that's Groot Hegarty who's come all the way out to almost his own 45, and marked in yellow there is Park Maher who's at around. 55 yards out from the opposition goal. Now on the bottom side of the screen you can see Dermot Burns who's at the moment been marked by Bonner Maher close to his own 65. He's calling for the ball further up the field and you can see what happens when you run it on a couple of seconds later that Dermot Burns is after picking up the ball. There is no Tipperary cover. Uh, Park Maher is centre back or he's supposed to hold that position. Bonner is chasing behind him and Dermot Burns has to run out of place and gets a score. So what I'm trying to think is what's the next evolution for Cody? So he, he wants to style Hugh Lawler as his, as his new fullback. We know that. He's got Tommy Walsh in as a cornerback at the moment. He's got Paul Murphy back there. He's trying to sort out that position. And he's got Joy Holden to come back as well. What does he want as the next step with his wing backs? The last time they won the All-Ireland, um, and I might be mistaken on this, but Killian Buckley and Por- uh, Tom Porrick Walsh were the two yeah. wing backs. If you're going to draw your half forward line out, as Groot Hegarty was doing, as we see Tom Morrissey doing the whole time, and as we see the other half forward Kyle Hayes doing for, for Limerick. What would, or what would Limerick not like? What would John Kiley hate to see? Wouldn't he hate to see Porrick Walsh and Killian Buckley coming up the field scoring three or four points or having three or four pops per game? Because he's going to draw back his own half, back, uh, half, half forward line as he's done for 15 years. And then Limerick are inviting Killian Buckley and Tommy Wal- or Parik Walsh onto them. And I think that's what Cody is looking towards. Would he sacrifice that and the possibility of them getting two points to get ball in here in space? Well, you see, this is the thing. We know the midfielders for Kilkenny are going to sit back anyway. We know Conor Fogarty is going to be back there. James Maher might have a bit of a free roll. Was they, weren't, they weren't last year against Limerick in the quarterfinal, though. They weren't They, they weren't back. Yeah. Like there was but I'm asking what's yeah. the evolution because Cody is a manager who learns and always progresses the next day and we, we talk about his record in replays over the years they lost the, the replay at the Leinster final last year to Galway fair enough but I'm just wondering is that the next step in, in the evolution if Hugh Lawler you know, comes out as the guy this year now I think it might be a year too early but I'm wondering is that what they're moving towards it'd be interesting to see because that's kind of it's something that Davy has developed over the last couple of years without being smart yeah because I think it's a lot of the thing with Davy is I don't think he thinks that he has enough maybe potency inside and maybe even here so he feels like he needs to get 
wing backs and midfield contributing more. That would be interesting to see. But like, yeah, Park Walsh rampaging from wing back would be very interesting. Yeah. Well, let's move on to Davy Davy Fitzgerald because you know there's this kind of theory that Davy has a shelf life in the sense that, like Mourinho, if he doesn't do it in year one or year two, things are just going to get a little bit kind of stale after that. Is this your theory or a no? Theory? It's definitely. It has been mentioned many, many times um, from different pundits. And if you look at what happened in Clare, after a while, the things did. It fell from the outside looking in that things went a small bit sour. I'm sure many players were still happy, but you would have had a situation where players were off the panel. Other guys, maybe you know, the results were poor. A lot of red cards at one stage, and as well. 60% of his championship wins as Clare manager came in the 2013 season. So I'm just wondering, where's the evidence to show in every other season that there was progression? So now it's year three in Wexford. Does Davy have a shelf life here? Do you think the best chance to win a Leinster title, for example, as it was in 2017, has it come and gone? Or do you think they can kick on? I, w- I would say the best chance to win a Leinster title has come and gone. To but is that because of the opposition or because of them? Uh, they were at a different level in 20s. I don't see them getting back to 2017 11s this year. Why? He was massively disappointed. I actually I don't think it's been referenced enough just how meekly they exited last year's championship. Like, the, they didn't raise a gallop at all. Against Clare yeah, in Parky And I honestly, thought, I honestly thought he would go then because I... <laughs> after the end of the first year massive momentum after the end of the second year down very very low and having to try and build things back up again I think I think he'll struggle to get back to where they were in 2017 and that's a lot to do with Kilkenny were in a different place in 2017 you have to remember so there was an opening there they beat them in a, an Inter semi-final I, I just don't think I haven't seen I've seen them a couple of times and I haven't seen the evidence that much has changed from 17 or 18 with how they're playing tactically I haven't seen I've seen very little evidence that, enough, that anything has changed. But the stats would back up what you're saying. He came in with Waterford in the middle of 08 and we felt the brunt of it in Offaly. He got them to an All-Ireland final. Uh, they won a Munster title obviously after and then he kind of left, went to Clare. I think the All-Ireland came too soon in Clare, funnily enough. And if it had came in 14, maybe they would have gotten another one. But I understand, I understand where you're coming from. I... I don't see them having a big say this year and they're under pressure. Three and four is massive in Leinster and they will be up under pressure to beat Dublin in Parnell Park in the first game. It's interesting that he's changed sweeper. So it was Sean yeah. Murphy and Kevin Foley went in there during the middle of the last season. At, at some point I remember him being in there. He had a good game against Cork the other day. I think we have an image of him coming up here. Um, got on the ball an awful lot. It was interesting that Sean Murphy had, there was that famous game against Kilkenny in the league where he had 27 or 28 possessions, but then by Leinster, I think the year later, he had only nine touches in the game, so they're trying to switch it up. You can see in this image here, on his left arm, he's wearing a Leinster uh, body warmer. I'm very unimpressed. Is that loud? Let's keep that GEA, Kevin, in future. Let's keep that GEA. Um, but do you think that... Are there signs on the field of how they're progressing? Because you know they've got a couple of excellent players in the likes of Lee Chin, Conor McDonald, Rory O'Connor, um, Dermot O'Keefe. There's a couple more as well that I'm not naming. Have they enough to kick on? And will their big players step up? Well, like last year, you'd have to say they didn't. Bar Barry Rory O'Connor, I thought he was like standing all nice year. Class. Like, but he's he's riddled with injuries already at a very early stage, which is very very worrying. And he's only kind of coming back now. And I know he was he was mixing Fitzgibbon with a bit with Wexford as well. I think I think it's mad to say, and I know he's very young, but an awful lot rests on his shoulders really, because he does have a bit of an X factor. He's the sort of lad that can get your one three or your four points and makes them makes them tick a bit. Like Lee Chin is, has no point in saying any difference. He's a serious point to prove yeah. this year, um, because last year just didn't, did not go well for him in championship at all. So I, I, think they're, I think they're going to be under pressure. I think they're going to be under pressure. I think Dublin could possibly pip them for that third spot in Leinster. But it's great to have that because it's going to be unbelievably competitive and everyone's looking at Munster. I know you're a Munster man like, and everyone's eulogising about the Munster championship. But the, the Leinster, <laughs> championship, Leinster championship is going to be very, very interesting and it'd be going to be more interesting if Carlo could squeak a result against someone. If, if we're... like. Carlo pushed Dublin hard in the league there a couple of weeks ago, but realistically, at the height of the summer, are Carlo going to be able to, to kick on, or are they, unfortunately, going to be the weak team that kind of takes it away from being, takes it from being an unbelievable provincial championship to somewhat slightly predictable because everyone is going to beat them. You know, in Munster, we know that anyone can beat anyone. Yeah. Mystical wonderland that it is. But, and it's not meant to be insulting to Carlo, but is that not just the reality of it? 
Ah, but it's going to be, there's no point, like, and let's not let last weekend's result kind of cloud the vision, like, it is going to be very, very hard for them to, from nearly out of nowhere, to compete in a Leinster Championship against those four very, very strong counties, so they are going to be under pressure, but I will imagine they'd be competitive, and I hate to say that they'd probably be a lot more competitive maybe than Offaly were last year, because those games were nearly all written off before they started, whereas a couple of the games in Carlow could be particularly interesting. We're going to have to talk about Offaly. Because I pointed out, you know, the, the poorness of their results and, you know, after, after two league games, they've scored a total of 19 points. And I had people giving out to me saying they should be in Leinster. It's a case of the elite teams. They're pulling the ladder up after them and leaving the likes of Offaly behind. But in two games, 19 points, your top scorer, joint top scorer is your goalkeeper with five frees. So can you please tell me what justification there is for keeping Offaly in the top tier of the Lee McCarthy? Um, we talk about like you know people laugh at us about like being hurling snobs or whatever. Yeah. The hurling snobbery, I think it's a bit mad. And obviously, I'm from Offaly and would give anything to see Offaly doing well. But there is a snobbery element there. I think because Offaly were successful in the 80s and in the 90s and won two All Irelands in both of those decades and were competitive up until five or six years ago. I would say that oh, it, 10 or 12 it, years it, yeah, ago. it'd be ah no ah no actually 15 should have probably. beaten Dublin in 2011 the championship but go on what year did you get beaten 31 points by Kilkenny 06 oh five oh five, oh, five in so, Park yeah, yeah but I'm every, stick to me going yeah, but, but uh, just back to it like everyone says oh, it would be terrible to see Offaly go and it will be t- and, and, it, and it is terrible don't get me wrong but if you're not competitive you're not competitive Give, some, give someone right. else, give someone else a competitive? go of being competitive. Right, so I'm going to na- list out um, a number of players that are no longer there. And correct me, because this is from a week or two ago that I put this list together. So if somebody has come back on yeah. the panel, definitely mention it. But Conor Slevin, uh, Stephen Corcoran, Niall Wynn, Paddy Delaney, Brian Paddy Malone. Paddy Delaney, yeah, okay, go on, yeah. yeah. Uh, Dermot Gath, uh, Stephen Burke, Danny Maloney, Michael Cleary, Dan Duhan, Conor Duhan, Barry Harding, Sean Coughlin, Tommy Garrity, Del Mark and Peter Garrett. Garrity, Conor Malloy, Jason Sampson, Podge Guinan, Emmett Nolan, Sean Cleary, Adrian Hines, uh, David King and Dan Kerms are out of the country at the moment. So what, what I'm trying to say is, surely Offaly have to get their house in order before they start complaining about people pulling the ladder up after them. I'd, I'd agree with you, and I'd looked at it in the sense that Offaly would go down, OK, great chance to rebuild, great chance to beat teams, get on a run and get a title behind you. The opposite has happened, from what I can see. It's awfully have dropped from the top tier. Oh, awfully are, oh, awfully are going nowhere. General apathy is sitting in. As you mentioned, a lot of those a lot of those lads, actually all of them as far as I'm aware, maybe apart from Parra Guinan, um Who I've seen play for yeah, UCD. He's captain of UCD he's, and he's is very, very good, Jen. He's very, very highly rated there. Yeah. So like there's a lot of bodies there, not the but there's a lot of bodies not there. The rot is kind of just set in and I hate to say it. But I thought that when Offaly went down, I thought the teams would flip-flop each year, up and down. They would swap places each year. Offaly will be under pressure to get to a Joe McDonough final this year, given how things are going. And just you mentioned about the, the 7 points and 12 points. Uh, over half of what they scored against Waterford was from freeze, and half of what they scored against Dublin was from freeze. So you're looking at 3 and 6, 9 points from play in 140 plus minutes, probably 150 minutes. And that's the big, that's the big issue. How are we going to score? And this might be a slightly awkward to ask you because you are a Borough club man they're in the same championship, but the Shinron players have decided that they're going to focus on the club instead of the county. And you know, I'm big into the club and all that kind of stuff, but as well, it just is another thing that just says, right, for whatever reason, Offaly themselves, the county board, are not leading this thing correctly. They're not getting their house in order. And players are just saying, you know what, I'll focus on the club instead. There might be a bit of, a bit of misinformation there, because as far as I'm aware, only two lads were called in. Now, there were lads that were involved last year and maybe fell off at different stages throughout the year. But you do see that happening in... I hate to say it, you do see that happening in weaker counties now. Oh, across where, the board where, in both Yeah, where success doesn't look... They don't look like legitimately that they have success at county level. We'll give the we'll give the club a right good run, and I I don't know whether that's the decision that was made amongst the, the two or three lads that were called in, but that's that is what happens. Like, and sometimes it takes it takes like a complete overhaul to come in and for everyone to be back on board. But given our under air results, what we have now in Offaly Club Hurling is is decent, but what's going to come in five or six years' time, it won't be as strong. So, if you don't have your house in order now, and we're struggling now. 
I don't, I don't like what the picture is going to be like in three or four years. Mm. Uh, let's move on to Tipperary because um, I was at the Clare game, an eight-point win, which, of course, the red card uh, the conditions, spoiled everything. Uh, if that was, uh, yeah, yeah. That, that was not a, like it was very good, promising, and I saw signs of progression. So, as a Tipperary man, I was very happy with what I saw that day. Then beaten quite comprehensively as the game went on against Limerick. So, one thing that I want to focus on straight away is. Just Brian Hog- Hog- uh, Hogan as the goalkeeper must talk. Obviously, that's a play on words because of uh, the media interview recently where he was told not to speak about Tipperary. But They're actually having a media day today, would you believe? I, yeah. I know they are. Yeah. And Liam Sheedy, Seamus Callanan and Norm McGrath yeah. are all talking about it. But what, like the goal that um, Graham Mulcahy got, it was a high ball into the area. So there's, uh, we'll, ha- we'll have the red person as Dunamacher, Graham Mulcahy. Now, Dunamacher is probably five foot eight, nine, something like that. Graham Mulcahy's probably even smaller and he's certainly more slight. Brian Hogan must be six foot five at least. He's a massive man, yeah, monster. So a high ball came in, possibly a mishit of a shot from uh, Tom Morrissey. It came in towards the square. So if if it's coming in towards the six-yard box and it's in a situation where Brian Hogan is going up with his hand to catch it, he feels he can win it. At this stage, Brian Hogan should be telling Dunamacher, hold out your man, hold him out. And instead, you had... Mulcahy getting in behind Dunamara. Dunamara got caught the wrong side, and, yeah. Yeah, and flicking a ball in past the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper, that is all the goalkeeper there, as far as I'm concerned. He needs to be roaring at his man, and then he needs to be coming out of cleaning house. Graham Mulcahy shouldn't be let within an ass's roar of where the ball is. Dunamara should put his hand up with the hurley, waving, Maria, I'm going for this, but really he's just holding back Graham Mulcahy. And I think... That's a big thing that we saw with Tip last year against Watford. There was one incident where the same thing happened. I think uh, Brian Hogan has some qualities mm. and he can be a top intercounty goalie, but you can't let that happen. Just on, just on that, like, and Hurland has obviously changed, but like, and the, probably the arts of defending have probably changed a bit and are maybe not the same as they were maybe 10 or 15 years ago. But like, when a ball goes in, you, nobody gets near your goalkeeper. They don't get within, they don't actually get their hurl close enough to get a block in on the goalkeeper. That's the way it is. Yeah. And it's not glamorous. It's, it's not glamorous at all. And the ball is coming into the goalie here. Brian Hogan would just say is here. The ball is coming in here. The defender is here. You're literally like doing the back does dummy runs to the right, dummy runs to the left, just to stop the forward getting around. That's what you do. Far too often now though, it's just like, they're not maybe touch tight and he's getting in here and he just, not in a month of Sunday should he get in there. Another thing on that goal is this. I have an issue with the keeper coming off the line. I have an issue with it in football as well. Unless the back is holding the man out and the keeper can come and collect, I don't think he leaves the line. Because it's the same in football. If the ball, if the ball gets a touch on it, it's a goal. Because yeah. the keeper is here. And the, defend, the forward has got a flick here and it's into an open net. Whereas if he stays on the line, if he's not sure, I would always stay on the line if I'm not sure. Because at least he has a chance of saving it. Mm. That's an issue I would have now. But the art of defending is probably... Yeah, it probably, needs, it probably could be refined a bit more. The game has changed, it's a lot more attacking, but there's certain things that will always follow through. That will always, that will always have a significance in hurling. As I said, I, th- I think it looked like Limerick, who were on year three with John Kiley, it looked like they were playing a different game to Tipperary. When they got, got the ball at the back, they were just popping it out to Class. each other, Brilliant working it up the field. And at times Tipperary were trying to do it, but at times as well Tipperary just, they lumped the ball up the field as they have done for so long. And I think we have a couple of screenshots here showing the sort of ball that Tipperary were playing up the field. So you can see there I've counted eight uh, Limerick defenders and I think it's perhaps five or six Tipperary players. But it's high hanging ball that takes an age to drop onto the ground. Never a forwards ball because the back is normally behind you ready to sledge you. And you can see how many of those Limerick guys are goal side as well, or just the right side of the ball for the break. And if you contrast, we have another image coming up as well here. You can see again, they're all looking directly up into the sky. That shows you've got a ball just blasted up yeah. into the clouds. There's no method to it. See where all the space is at either, either flank and Tipper just hitting the ball up into the clouds. Now, again, it's very early days for Liam Sheedy. It's his second uh, league game. But those are the things. That should be the key area. How can we work the ball into space rather than hitting it into traffic? Because that's what Limerick do the whole time. They just You see how often, right? And this is the, the case in point with Limerick. You normally have Graham Mulcahy playing in here at right corner forward, and he's a left-hander. One of the half-back line or will, will probably work the ball to Darrow O'Donnell and Keane Lynch or even Colin Ryan now. And even the half-forward line will come out. They pop the ball in here. You're going to have Aaron Galan coming out in front of his man, 
turns wheels straight over the bar. Mm. And it's just so simple what they do. They bring out the half forward line to create space for those guys. And there's often a bunch and break thing. When the ball is coming out from the, the back line, time. they all go into the, the centre, the time, meaning yeah. there's 40 yards either side to play it into. If it doesn't go to the half forward, it goes into the full forward line as well. And it's just so simple. And Clare are doing it, Limerick are doing it, Galway, they're all doing different variations of it. And when for Tip to kick on to be All-Ireland champions again, or All-Ireland contenders, they need to bring a bit more of that into their game. I don't think it's that simple. <laughs> I don't think it's that simple. I was looking at Limerick the other night, and you'd nearly, no, you'd, you'd nearly have your heart in your mouth sometimes, but it was brilliant what they were doing. The cornerback or the fullback wins the ball here. Yeah. It was here. They were nearly playing triangles. Oh, they were, and it was yeah. three or four, and maybe back here again. It, when it goes well, and they obviously have it refined, when it goes well, it's brilliant, but... They have obviously practiced that ad nauseum because it's just bang, 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 ball inside. Well, there's always a guy coming here. off the shoulder. It's brilliant like that, yeah. And just with the image you showed earlier, and it's a classic one as well, the, ball, the puck out's coming down here, everyone is leaning here. Everyone is leaning here. Everyone is in here. There's a load of bodies on the breaking ball. Whereas a lot of the time in Tipperary's attack, we'll just say that Tipperary's half forward line is here and here. And the puck out's coming down. And it's maybe one maybe two and maybe three whereas Limerick have so many bodies on the breaking yeah. ball they're just increasing the percentages of them doing it or of them w winning the ball but what Limerick are doing is yeah it's it seems even a bit advanced on last year even sometimes even it's a bit more exaggerated working the ball out but they still are not panicking at all they have this beat this kind of idea beaten into them that when the ball goes into the forward line it's going to be a good ball we're yeah. going to give an advantageous ball to the forward. We're the easy thing to do. And Dermot Burns was the worst in the world to do it. He got the ball here and he lorded it in. <laughs> but he rarely does it now. He, he rarely strikes on the back foot now. Yeah. He strikes on the front foot and it's a low ball. Or as he's seen the other night, he can pop it over himself. On the plus side for Tipperary, there was the win over Clare. And a win, no matter what way it came, was important because Tip hadn't won a game league or championship since the previous March against Limerick after extra time. So that clear game was important. The work rate from the forward line I thought was really, really excellent. But as the game went on, people got tired. They just weren't using the ball at all. So, you know, I, I would be a little bit concerned from that point of view, but it is such early days that you have to give Liam time to to mould the team the way he wants. And also, he's bringing in a lot of players that probably haven't, that have maybe seen one season under Michael Ryan and probably play in a slightly different way. So, you know, it's such early days. And, you know, when you think about it, tips they'll have Jason Ford, Seamus Callan, Noel McGrath, John McGrath, and Bubbles if he gets used a bit more as well. So the potential just, just is on, there. Just on tip as well. The first day, that was a great, that was a very good win against Clare. But I do have to say, I... I thought Clare were shadow boxing to the highest extent. Well, oh. they had only five of their All Ireland semi final team playing. Yeah, and John Conlon, he he went everywhere but full forward. They had no, he had no interest in showing their hand for championship at all, zero. And they made Paddy look like an absolute hero. And they nearly, it's like they nearly done it on purpose. They just played ball down on top of him, and he sweep around here. When they played Tipperary in championship, that is the exact opposite of what they would let him to mm -hmm. do, let him do. Whether he's whether he's on the edge of the square or he's wing back, just something quickly as well. I was impressed with James Barry the other night, how I thought he looked lively. And it's the first time in probably three years that I've seen him look like he was bouncing on his feet. I thought he looked really lean and they're obviously, it would be a massive bonus if he can play full back for them. And if they move massive. Michael Breen back there because he has lots of qualities and they're not being utilised. Looks like that's not gonna, it doesn't look like that's going to happen. I don't think stage. it will happen, no, but I, I, think, I think it should. Yeah. Right, we're going we're gonna to switch over to a quick video. The All-Ireland Club semi-finals are happening this weekend. You've St. Thomas is against Cushendall and you also have Bally Hale against Bally Gunner in what should be a cracker in Thurles. Oshin Langan caught up with Wayne Hutchinson of Bally Gunner at the AIB GA Media Day this week. Wayne, I think you tweeted something like, this means everything when Ballygunner finally won the AIB Munster, Munster Club Championship. Club means everything to you, doesn't it? Um, yeah, absolutely, of course. Um, I suppose as a, as a group of players, where even though we've won a, a, a number of county medals, um, there was always that feeling that we underachieved because we never actually won the Munster Championship. So as a group of players, it was always something that we wanted to achieve because I suppose there was a lot of talk around the, the last team to win the championship in, back in 2001. So we kind of wanted to create our, our own bit of history. Um, and even though it, it took a number of heavy defeats or disappointing days, we absolutely were absolutely thrilled to get over the line. And um, yeah, absolutely, club, club is where it's at. And it's, 
absolutely fantastic. What kind of game are you expecting against Ballyhale? It's essentially a kind of a local derby of sorts. Yeah, no, absolutely, uh, Oisin. It definitely is a local derby. Like, just probably between the two clubs, let's say there's a 30 minute drive between the two clubs, probably just the bridge and Waterford really separating us, like, you know. So, um, we're going to, like, Ballygunner, we're going to be need, need to be at, we're going to need to increase our performance by 20% uh, from the Munster Championship game against Napier if we're if we're going to have any chance there. Absolutely fantastic club. They they they've been here. They've been in Crow Park on, on uh, they've been in Crow Park on um, all Ireland final day. There's a lot of players in that uh, squad that have achieved the ultimate dream of winning all Ireland clubs. So this is brand new territory to, uh, for ourselves. So um, it's going. To, we know it's going to be in that massive massive game and it's going to be it really is going to be 50 50 um, but hopefully like we can perform on the day and bring something to the table yeah Perfect. briefly marked uh, wayne hutchinson in a county final there in 2015 big beast of a man caught a ball over me which really sickened me i, I said it wouldn't be the first or the last to do that no, no, first no. and that hurt now nathan's after joining us for the debate section how are you doing nathan great to be here sandwiched between two good hurling men well, they are a good hurling side as well. Unbeaten so far in the league this season. Now, granted, trip to London last weekend, the game was called off. Yeah, nothing easy there in bad weather in London. First match, but yeah, coming force. No Keith Higgins for the league this year either. I know. Is that? Are you happy about that as a massive Mayo hurling fan or an even bigger football well, fan? Well, you see, hurling, uh, Ballyhonest, where I'm from, is part of the hurling stronghold of Mayo. So obviously, we want the hurling team as strong as possible. But I think anything that gets Keith Higgins in peak shape for football championship... You've really drummed up interest in the All Ireland Club semi finals with your interview with Colin Fennelly, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd say you might be looking to chat to him afterwards somehow. Remind us about that. That it was quiet. A quiet. quick word on that before we get to the debate the club semi final. So, Ballygunner, after winning, like they won the Monster title in 2001, their only win in nine attempts, if I remember correctly. Uh, Bally Hale have won the All Ireland a number of times at this stage. Who do you fancy based on the idea that Ballygunner are coming into uncharted territory, all these players, versus Bally Hale, where it's almost conditioned into them, we're the team, sort of team that wins All Ireland? Bally Hale have surprised me, I won't lie. The, um, I saw them down in, down in Wexford Park against Neavena, Conor McDonald's club, and while they hit them for hit them for six goals that day, I just, I, I, they just keep, yeah, they keep surprising me, to be honest with you. I keep finding, trying to find deficiencies in them, and they just keep blowing them out of water, like they did with Bally Bowden in, in the Leinster final. When it comes to All Ireland, uh, experience it doesn't get much better should the top of the roll of, roll of honour realistically and it's going to be really interesting probably might be a shootout with TJ and Park Matney as well that's going to be really really interesting obviously the, the managers as well uh, Henry versus Fergal Hartley like two kind of county legends as well it's going to be very interesting but you'd, you'd have to I'd have to side with Barry Hale just about Now Nathan take over what's happening here Alright so this is the debate section this is, this is going to be a weekly event Yeah so, a weekly jewel, actually. Verney on one side, Offaly on one side, Tip on the other. This week, one big talking point for you. You're going to get 60 seconds each to make the case. Should Matty Kenny go after Jeremy Connolly and bring him into the fold for the Dublin Hurlers? You're going to get a minute each, lads. This is going to be timed, so no messing about. Michael, you can go first. Should Dermot Connolly be brought back in or brought in with the Dublin hurlers? Uh, I think that's a crazy notion. The man, while still playing competitive hurling with St Vincent's, hasn't played county hurling of any description since 2007, since they were beaten in an under-21 semi-final. Uh, sorry, uh, all football fans. Hurling is not like football. You can't take a year or two out and just come back in or come into an inter-county fold. He's never been in a senior inter-county hurling fold. Uh, the skill involved in hurling just requires daily practice. It requires that your guys that come back from a year out of inter-county hurling they suffer the year after. A guy that has, has never played senior inter-county hurling and hasn't played inter-county hurling in 12 years to come back into a county scene, I think it's absolutely bananas. Um, the second thing is Matty Kenny would not allow something like that, a sideshow, to distract all the work and everything that he's done with Dublin so far and everything he hopes to do. And it would be a massive, massive little side sideshow and he wouldn't allow it to happen. 59 seconds. All right. <laughs> Uh, just to be clear, in future weeks for the debate, 30 seconds of each debate can't be taken up slagging football and just bigging up hurling. <laughs> or repeating the question. That was very sort of leaving sort of... That was for our viewers. It's yeah, yeah. got himself into the, into the mode. Yeah. All right, Vernie is done. Saint, take it away. Number one, Matt, he said Matty Kenny wouldn't allow, allow sideshows. Well, he had me on his team for five years and I'm talking in the media right. every day, so there's no problem there. Um, 
With Kula, we played against Dear McConnelly a number of times. I remember 2014, he played full forward for Vincent's against us, scored five points in Parnell Park, all from play. Absolutely wonderful. Probably hadn't picked up a hurley in 11 months and just glorious anyway. I saw him in the last couple of years, I saw him midfield for Vincent's, got a couple of points from his own 65 more or less, just ran the show. He's an unbelievable athlete. Yes, he would need to clean up his hurling an awful lot to get to inter-county level. And now the music is after coming on with Countdown, no, I'm panicking. But like, I'm just trying to think, who does Matty Kenny want full forward? Play the ball in front of him. He's an unbelievable athlete. Turn, go at you, straight in on goal. He did it with Con with the club. Would he like to have someone like Connolly doing it with the county? Because does he have that many other options? Yes, Mark Shute can do it, Eamon Dillon can maybe do it, but I think Connolly would be unbelievable in there and it'd be worth getting him in to see what he's like. Well, I'll tell you what, boys, you're good. A minute. So do I, do I decide just to go with my feeling or who made the we better We want your debate? feeling, yeah. Well, like, you see, it's, you fall down on both sides. You understand that will bringing Jeremy Connolly in destabilise what Matty Kenny's been doing? over the last few months. But for sheer excitement, surely when you're a Dublin hurler and you're living in the shadow of the footballers constantly, like this is going to dominate headlines for a couple of months. Suddenly everybody's wondering what's happening with the Dublin hurlers because Jim McConnelly's there. And also, is there the possibility that you need to be a realist if you're in Dublin hurling, that the footballers are taking your best players, that you offer them a path back, that when Cod O'Callaghan gets to 28, 29, that you say, listen, we understand that you wanted to go with the footballers, but there's always an opportunity to come back and play for the hurlers. Who said you at? I'm going to go with you, said. Oh, be okay, right. So you're telling me. <laughs> well, you don't get to the. I just my decision is final. That's it's five all Ireland football medals. You're telling me that he's going to go into a hurling setup where they could struggle to get out of the Leinster Championship rather than if if he was going back to playing inter county. But the reason does not have the love of hurling. Is that not what draws? Yeah, the back? love of hurling. He would have been playing it for the last ah. ten or twelve years for Dublin. Uh, I don't know. It might be just the perfect time. It's hard to like. Mossy Quinn had a picture of himself. Um, I think the the Blue Panther and uh, Dermot at Croke Park the other day for the Galway game. Made me wonder, okay, does that mean that he's not going to be involved anymore? Maybe he will be. Maybe he will be with the footballers. But I just thought, imagine him in a Dublin hurling jersey. If he got going, if he was fit as a fiddle, if he got his touch right in a short amount of time, how exciting would that be? Can I just say, this decision is classic OTB favouritism. I'm the outlier in here. I'm, I'm, like just, I'm just a small fish here. <laughs> <laughs> we've got wow. a couple of comments in. Just get your debate a little bit better for next week. We've got a lot of comments in here. Martin Furlong on YouTube. Welcome back, lads. Do you think Wexford could win something this year? Foley is playing the sweeper superbly, and we have strengthened the forwards with a fully fit McGovern and Dunbar. They have. I still think they're just a little bit short. Yeah, I, d I don't think they have um, forwards that will do the damage when they're playing. They're going to be playing six on five up there. Yeah. So they're going to be under pressure. It's very hard as a forward. I think you get a bit dispirited mm. as well, constantly chasing, uh, being outnumbered. Davin Finnerty on Facebook. Maybe the heavy pitch doesn't suit Cork. Different animal on a dry sod. I wouldn't let bad cows out in that Parky Creeve pitch at the moment. Uh, Paddy O'Sullivan on Facebook. Can Carlo Hurlers throw down a realistic challenge in Leinster this year? How close are they from the break, though? Breakthrough, maybe. Yeah. Um, no, definitely not. They're still a bit away. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're still a bit away. And Fantasy Hurling 2019 on Facebook. Michael and Will, are you happy with your Fantasy Hurling team so far? Michael's sitting 230th and <laughs> Will sits 411th overall. <laughs> Will didn't show up today, so do you want to answer for Will? Uh, I'm sure he's very proud of that. 430th out of how many? Uh, that's, that's the question. Millions, possibly. Who we'll did go. you leave out? Who, who's the key selection for Fantasy Hurling? In I left. The uh, Tony Kelly got sent off for me in the oh, first week. And then I, I, can't handle, I can't handle the constantly having to change teams and stuff like that. Like... I just think you should go watch it. Yeah, I know, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. <laughs> stick to the yeah, stick to the fifteen. When you're in, you're in. Start. Yeah. I think we've it all said, lads, have we? Yeah, probably. Well, we don't. We could probably talk for another two hours. But yeah. we'll probably cut. All right, that's it for the first hurling show of the series. We'll be back again same time next week. Thanks very much. change a bit and are maybe not the same as they were maybe 10 or 15 years ago but like